first question is, uh, where do these referrals usually come from for you, Chris? Surgery. I must exclusively for surgeons. Right. Usually it's because the surgeon doesn't, you know, the patient's high risk. They don't want to take them for cholecystectomy. Um, I rarely, I mean, sometimes it might come from the ED via the, you know, via the, ED, you know, the surgeon via the ED doc, that sort of thing. But usually it's the surgeon who's making the call. Hey, ask IR to, to put the, this in, right? Yes. Um, I mean, a lot of times, like in, in some super sick patients that are coming to the ICU, it's come a kind of a, um, a multidisciplinary approach. But I would say at some point there's been a surgeon encounter on someone I'm placing a coli tube on um, for our practice. I, I would venture to say 100 percent of the time. That's true. Yeah. A lot of the ones that I would get in the middle of the night, a lot of times came from the ICU doc. Um, but I think that's after they had a conversation with the surgeon. Um, that basically said the guy's too sick to go to surgery. Um, Are you placing these in middle in the middle of the night? I have, yeah, I've had to. Yeah, well, not not anymore, as you know. I don't take call, but <laughs> sure, sure. But just a part but, of your practice, like that wasn't like an I uncommon did. consult, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, for sure. I, I would mean, say I've, I've I would say I've never been called in the middle of the night to place one. It's always been like, oh, we'll do it first thing in the morning, kind of thing. Um, one, I, I can, I can just honestly say that like no one's ever called me like as an, as the on-call doc to come in and place one in the middle of the night. Um, yeah. I'm almost positive. I would, I mean, I never say 100% of the time, you know, if the patient's sick enough. I'll get out of bed, go see the patient and depending on the situation, probably recommend that they could wait until the morning. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I don't know. There's been, a, I, I've, I remember having that conversation with one ICU doc in particular who was like, look, this guy's really sick, you know, um, I don't remember if they were on pressers or anything, but they had some hypotensive episodes. They were, they seemed to be, you know, in sepsis. So that's what pushed me to go in and put it in kind of like a nef tube, you know? Sure. Um, yeah, and I, I can envision a world, uh, where, where like there's, there's <laughs> patients that would warrant that. I, yeah. I guess, um, you know, very possibly my acuity level, like in, in some of the hospitals I work at is lower or, you know, the ICU docs, uh, tolerance for, um, sepsis is maybe a little bit higher, but a lot of times we continue to cool them off with antibiotics and then place it like next available slot. Like I would say not emergently, but urgently. Yeah. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. It's, it's emergent or, 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 or urgent for sure. Um, yeah. Do you usually have CT or ultrasound imaging ahead of time? And if, if you didn't, would, I mean, let's say they came from an outside hospital, what would you, what do you usually like need in terms of imaging? Yeah, I would say that, you know, they, they come to me at various levels of, of being like fully baked versus like completely not worked up at all. And the surgeon just kind of like eyeballed them and said, like, not a surgical candidate. I don't know if they got cholecystitis, but like, it doesn't matter to me because I wouldn't take out the gallbladder. And, and then it kind of gets uh, put in my lap. Um, I would say always I'll go see the patient, um, and do an assessment, look at any prior imaging. I, I will go off, uh, ultrasound if like, I think it's rip roaring cholecystitis, uh, if it's equivocal, um, may or may not get a HIDA scan, a CT. I'll only have a, if I have a CT because, you know, they had one out of the ER or if somebody ordered one happy to like use CT, but, um, ultrasound and HIDAs are what like I would, uh, be ordering. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So one of those three typically ultrasound, HIDA and or CT, but a lot of times, like you say, it's usually just a HIDA and an ultrasound. Yeah. Definitely going to get an ultrasound. Like if for yeah. some reason they hadn't had an ultrasound, I would definitely get an ultrasound, even if they'd had a CT. Well, I don't right. want to say all, like, I mean, that's not a hundred percent. Sometimes you can look at it and say, okay, that's cholecystitis. Um, yeah. but almost always I'll have an ultrasound and plus or minus on the HIDA. Yeah. Great. HIDA is a kind of a mixed bag, right? I mean, a lot yeah. of false positives and HIDAs, but you know, sometimes it's helpful. Like if you happen to get a HIDA that shows a patent cystic duct, then you're kind of off the hook. Yeah. Any labs you're making sure you got, like coags? Yeah, I definitely do coags. Make sure the patients aren't on any any coagulation. And not that that's a, a contraindication, but um, it helps me, uh, you know, it's a relative contraindication. Certainly helps me stratify my risk and uh, right. counsel either the patient or family members appropriately. So I have uh, PT, INR, platelets, and I'm trying to think of what else. That's probably it. I can't think of it. Nothing else jumps out. 